Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome to video two of my Halloween 2019 series. I got asked in a recent Instagram live stream if I ever use older stamps, which I do a lot. Just depends on whether or not they're still available. But in a lot of my videos, I will do um, or use older images. And these ones are proof of that. <laughs> These are the Hey Pumpkin and Trick or Treat stamp sets from Simon's a Stamp. These came out years ago. The little pumpkin one came out six, six years ago, something like that. And then the Trick or Treat one came out, I think five years ago or so. I've done videos with both, more than one video with both. Hopefully I'll remember and be able to find them and link to them like I always do. I like to link to other videos and whatnot in the upper right corner as well as at the end etc. Sorry I'm a little out of breath. Literally running around, picking up kids, supper, all that fun stuff. So stamp the images onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock with Simon's Intense Black Ink and um, use my Mini Misty for that and stamp them a few times to get a really good crisp black impression. And then I am coloring these in with Copic markers. And the top cat, I decided to do them as just a solid gray cat. We actually have one in our neighborhood that likes to kind of wander around and is really super friendly and he's just all gray. So that was the inspiration for that one. And then the cat in the pumpkin, um, you only see his face, but I am coloring while well, her like my kid's cat, which is a tortoiseshell cat. So half her face is black, literally almost right straight down. And then the other half is like that mottled orange and gray and whatnot. So I started with cool grays to do like the gray and then to go to the darkest to make like almost black. I rarely, rarely ever use the actual black Copic marker. Um, mostly just cool grays. Sometimes I'll use warms depending on what I'm doing, but I chose cool grays for these images. And I did work lightest to darkest, which is not my norm, but I've been going back and forth a bit more lately experimenting. And then I used a couple of yellow reds for the rest of the little tortoiseshell cats coloring. And I kind of went back and forth with those as well as with one of the grays just to kind of give it that like more modeled look. And then um, added my go-to kind of inner ear color, which is R22 and R20. Once I got those colored, I added just a bit more of the gray here and there just to kind of finish off my little tortie. In the video, at least from my editing, it's kind of hard to see. You lose a lot when you do the really dark grays or like trying to do black. You can lose a lot of the detail, but in real life, you can see the stamp, like the eyes and the nose and the whiskers and everything. And then I went on to do the pumpkin, which is technically my go-to, like the first three colors. That is my go-to orange color, and that is my go-to orange combo for Halloween. This, I've been using these three together. They're just the perfect orange combo. This time I decided to add the E08 just to deepen it that little bit. I've been experimenting more with adding that fourth color to my combos, just trying out some, you know, not necessarily new, th if they're not new, not new to me. I just usually stick with two to three, but when you add that fourth, it really deepens and intensifies everything. So here and there like slowly getting outside the box with Copic colors. It's only been, you know, 13 years since I started coloring with them or something like that. So did that. And then um, my go-to green combo for the cat's cape. And this is where I like switched back to going darkest to lightest because it's just more convenient and faster. So did the green and then added purple for his little eye mask and did the inside of the cape with the purple. So I've got my more classic Halloween colors, you know, the orange, the green and purple. So once I got all of my coloring done, I took my Jelly Roll 10 white gel pen and added some little highlights and whatnot. And um, I never follow any of the, you know, light source rules, anything like that. I just add highlights where I think they're going to look good. That's, that's about it. So went in, added some little highlights and then another old school, you know, technique. Um, I fussy cut out these images. The cat with the cape, there is a coordinating wafer die set for that stamp set, but this little pumpkin set does not have a coordinating wafer die set. This was like, yeah, so many years ago, like way before that was even a thing. Um, I still prefer wafer dies so much faster, so much easier. Just my thing. That's what I like, but didn't have one. 
So I fussy cut these out with my little cutter bee cutting scissors. I cut off their whiskers. I will deal with that later on in the video um, because that's part of it too. I don't have the time for that. <laughs> and that is some, that is some real detail cutter, cutting and whatnot. But I was like, no, just cut them off. I'll deal with it later. I then went in and coated all of the edges of the cut cardstock with my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker. This just conceals the white edge and makes everything look cleaner because my cutting isn't perfect. Um, I cut right on the line when I do fussy cutting like this, but it's still not perfect. And then the white edge of the cardstock's exposed. This just cleans it up, makes it look a little bit better, a little more finished. And then this will also blend a little more seamlessly when I adhere everything later on. So after I, do, I did that, I have some white cardstock that I die cut with one of Simon's basic rectangle wafer dies. And then I have this um, staggered sort of border stamp that is from the Trick or Treat set. And I'm going to stamp that on the bottom with uh, Versafine Claire's Nocturne ink. I like the Simon's Stamp Intense Black ink for my Copic coloring because it doesn't react with Copic markers. But any sort of like solid black stamping, I prefer this Versafine Claire Nocturne ink very very similar if not the same as their original like VersaFine Onyx Black that I've used for eons. Um, also because it's similar if not the same formula it smears if you're not careful. I had ink everywhere. I had it all over my hands. It, I kept picking it up. I think I got some on my, my glass media mat without you know when I stamped that border and wasn't paying attention and I just kept finding smears of it on my hands. I get it on the card. I'll fix it though. So I stamped the sentiments from the trick or treat set onto some lavender cardstock with that ink. Um, stamped it multiple times so you don't get a good crisp black image. And then I die cut them with the coordinating wafer dies. And then I changed my mind and didn't want to use those on the front of the card and stamped the Hey Pumpkin sentiment from the Hey Pumpkin stamp set with Simon's um, orange peel ink. And then I wanted to add this little spider hanging from its little web that's in the trick or treat set. And I say this, I think every Halloween series, I have like arachnophobia. It's not even borderline. Like I have arachnophobia, spiders and meat, mm -mm, nope. But when it comes to Halloween and Halloween decor, I'm all for it. It literally doesn't bother me at all. I think, and especially if they're cute, I'm like, bring on the cutesy spiders. So weird. In real life, you know. So anyway, masked off the sentiment with just post-it tape, just so that I could stamp that and not have it go over the orange ink of the sentiment. And then here's where I fix the no whiskers issue or cut off whiskers on these cats is I'm restamping them with the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. It's a very subtle thing. You could also just go in with like a black, you know, fine line marker and quickly draw them in depending on what you're making. But I just find it's quicker and easier to just stamp them. So I adhered the first cat and then I'm stamping the one in the pumpkin so that the whiskers that kind of basically will overlap this other cat, um, will show up. So stamp that, didn't have to be perfect because again, I'm gonna adhere the colored version right on top of it. So I adhered these down with my um, craft tacky glue and then press them into place. And now I've got them like staggered, everything's perfect, life is great. Then I realized there's a tiny little smear near the sentiment because that's like, it just gets everywhere. So the joy of making Halloween cards is just stamp bats over it. <laughs> So that's how I fix the smear rather than trying to like erase it or scratch it off or how, God forbid redo like that panel. Um, just stamped a couple of bats over it and we're good to go. So then for my card base, I decided to use more of the lavender cardstock and I masked off what will be the back of that card with more of the post-it tape so I don't get any ink on it. And then I'm inking up Simon's spiderweb background that I used on my last Halloween video because this is probably going to see a ton of use this year because I just love this stamp. So ink that up and then stamp that onto my card front. You're only gonna see like the outer edges of it and it doesn't need to be perfect. It's another reason why I love a background stamp like this because it looks better the less perfect it is really. So stamp that and then to finish off the inside of the card, I'm gonna stamp that little border stamp again with the black ink. And then um, I had dithered between like stamping more images and coloring them and all that, but don't like going that all over the inside of the card but it needs to have something so I decided to stamp the cat in the costume with some deep purple ink and then I'm going to add those sentiments that I didn't end up using on the outside of the card I decided to adhere them onto the inside of the card so just adhere those with craft tacky glue and then once those are adhered into place um, my final little 
you know, embellishment on the inside was to stamp that little spider again because it just looks cute, you know, hanging from the inside of the card as well. So I'm going to stamp that, just kind of line it up with the score line of the card and then stamp that with the VersaFine Claire ink as well. So get that stamped. Inside is now done. To finish the outside, I'm just going to adhere the um, front panel with more of that craft tacky glue. And then once that's adhered into place, I decided to add just a little bit of bling since I didn't have anything else sparkly or fun going on. I pulled out some of the Studio Cadia August crystals because the green was very close to the green that I used on his little cape. So sprinkled those kind of heavily throughout the card and also use those to cover up a couple other little boo-boos on the card. Again, that's another reason why I love bling because it covers up everything. So adhered those into place with the craft tacky glue and my jewel picker and that is going to finish off the card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to everything I used. You can check that out in the description box below as well as on my blog. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping, for commenting. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!